Hey guys, Abraham here, super happy to be sharing this very important bits of information. Now, this is going to be a very like educational video because I'm going to be showing you all of the necessary steps that we go through when we're creating an asset for 3D. We're going to start with the concept piece and I'm going to show you all the way until the very end when the piece is actually in the engine, like ready to be used inside of a game. So as we know, the 3D world is very like wide, right? Like we can do so many things inside of it. We can do games, we can do film, we can do commercials, but it doesn't really matter which part of the industry you're focusing on, there's always going to be something called the production pipeline, which is a series of steps that we're going to be following in order for us to make sure that all of the assets or things that we're creating can't up being used properly on the final like distribution like thing that we're going to do, it be it a game, a movie, a film, or a commercial, whatever. So in this case, I'm going to talk about this X, which by the way is our new premium course. You can check the link down here. And I'm going to explain very quickly how we go through the process of creating this element. Of course, I'm not going to have the time to cover like the whole process is right now that's on the on the course but um, I do want to like talk about the different stages because I think that especially when you're getting into the 3d world it could be it can be very challenging or very uh, daunting to to try to understand all of the necessary things that we go through so the first thing that we need like it doesn't matter what industry you're working on you need an idea you need the concept and thanks to Xin Liu we have this amazing concept I'm gonna link her portfolio on the description as well and uh, she created this amazing concept for a sort of like fantasy fire axe weapon and the, when I saw it I was just like in love with the concept it's it's so cool it reminds me a lot of my days playing World of Warcraft it has this very stylized cool looking vibe and I thought I think we can make this a little bit realistic and generate a concept that looks very cool. So I reached out to her and I um, explained that we were going to do a tutorial. She was super okay with it. And uh, yeah, here we go. So the first thing we do once we have our concept is we create something called a blocking. So the blocking is just a very simple, super simple. You can see the, the shapes right here. Very, very, very simple shapes. Let me make the material a little bit lighter very very simple shapes that capture the essence or the proportions of the object why is this important because with this blocking i can already send this to another person in the pipeline to someone doing animation for instance or someone doing programming for like particles and things like that and they will know that most of the volume is going to be here of course there's going to be adjustments later on but if we bring this into the game exactly as it is and we see that the character is moving the weight feels nice and everything is just like uh, looking uh, cool then that means that we can move forward on to the next stage. The next stage of the process, once we have a concept and we do a blocking to make sure that the concept works, we can move on, on to the modeling and sculpting stages. So this one right here is a progress shot, like roughly halfway through, where as you can see, I've modeled several parts of the handle, the rock handle that we have right here, while still keeping most of the blocking, because we are going to still use the blocking as a reference point to make sure that everything fits, that the proportions that we're using are right, and that we are pretty much sure that we, we got the right path for our element. Once we're happy with this, once we've uh, successfully created this element right here, we can go to the next one, which is the finalized sculpt. So after several hours of work, we have this piece right here, which is what we called our high poly acid. This is very, 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 very important. Several years ago, I'm talking about like 10, 12 years ago, the, the thought process that was being like taught at schools was that you needed to create a very optimized low poly and then bring that low poly into ZBrush or Modbox or some other software, give it some detail and then bring it back, but keeping the low poly. That's not the way we do it anymore, okay? And, and unfortunately, there's a lot of teachers out there that still use that sort of like old method. And the problem with that method is, if, the problem with that method is that if you constrain yourself to the low poly, then you're not gonna really be able to extract as much information from the high poly. So the way we do it now is we don't care about the low poly. We leave the low poly at the, like at the second stage and we just focus on creating an amazing looking 3D asset, which is this one right here. Once we have this, there's a couple of things that we can do. We can actually 3D print this. Like, this is ready for 3D print. We could go, like, add some supports and, like, 3D print the freaking cosplay axe. I think I'm going to do that later on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, this is ready for other parts or other production pipelines. If we're going for film or games, we need to ask ourselves, is this thing going to be running in real time? Do we need to optimize the object? And more often than not, yes, we will need to optimize the object. So once we're happy with a high poly and we have a really, really, really cool high poly, we can move on to the next stage, which is, the low poly. So the low poly part of the process is when we take that high poly and we capture the silhouette and all of the important details of that high poly and we optimize it in such a way that it's a lot like lower poly and that way when we run it in a game it won't be a huge performance hit. 
Now, this could definitely be like this could definitely be optimized a little bit further. However, during the course, I explained that we want to conserve or preserve as much of the silhouette as possible because the silhouette is the most important part of the retopology process. This axe right now, by the way, if uh, you are wondering, is sitting, I believe, at 16,000 triangles or something like that. Let's go here. There we go. 17,000 triangles, uh, 17,544, which for a triple A game, perfectly fine. Like a gun, if you take a look at, let's say, the, the Lancer from Gears of War or one of like the complex rifles from Halo, you're gonna be like roughly at this uh, at this uh, amount. If you go for mobile games or games that are running with a lot of little units at the same time, like, uh, I don't know, like Total War or things like that, then of course you need to optimize further because the amount of elements is gonna increase. But the optim optimization is something that happens depending on each uh, like a uh, product or pipeline. So yeah, that would be their retopology process. So we've successfully created our high poly, we've successfully created our low poly, and now we go through a very interesting process that has been made easier now with Blender 3.6. Uh, I find it funny, I just finished like recording the, the, uh, like, the tutorial, and I was using Blender 3.5, and they just released 3.6 at literally the last day I was recording. So of course I wasn't able to go back, but all of the tools that you have or that I teach in the tutorial are perfectly valid, and you're even gonna have an easier time because there's a new tool in 3.6, which is the UV packing engine, which is a lot better. So that's the next one, we need to do UVs. So UVs are the process that we use to map textures into our element. And in the course, I teach you a really cool method where we go over mirrored UVs so that we can save ourselves a lot of space, recycle both sides of the axe pretty much, and get ourselves a lot of nice resolution. So the UV process, it's one of those things that people struggle a lot with, but I try to always teach it in a way that's easy to understand, easy to follow, and easy to get really good results. So yeah, that's it. Once we have the low poly, the high poly, and the low poly, only the low poly needs UVs. When we have all of this, we jump on to the next and almost final stage of the process, which is the bakes. So the bakes is when we transfer all of the information from the high poly to the low poly. And this texture that you're seeing right here, this is called the normal map. The normal map describes how the normals or the, the surface of the object reacts to light. And it's a fake way to add the detail that we had on the high poly. So even though this is the low poly, you can still see like all of the crevices, the cracks, the um, the details on the axe, like everything's gonna be here on the normal map. And the normal map is one of the maps that we connect over here so that when we see it in the game, it looks like the object has a lot of detail when in reality, it's a very like simple, low poly. So that's the next step, baking. And um, we also covered that, by the way. So once we have the baking done, we go to one of my favorite parts of the whole process, which is texturing. And in the texturing department, we focus on creating realistic textures for all of our elements so that we can really convey the type of material that we're describing. Is it metal? Is it rock? Is it leather? Is it cloth? Is it skin? Like there's a lot of techniques that we can do to generate like really, really cool looking textures. Now, Blender does have its own like texturing department right here in Texture Paint, but it's not, I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, it's good but it doesn't beat Substance Painter. Like Substance Painter just makes things so, so, so much easier. And you can get this result really, really, really fast with that software. So during the course, we go over Substance Painter and this is what we get right here. And uh, finally, inside of Substance Painter as well, we do a little bit of tricks here with the emission map. So let me go to the material here. Oh, where is it? Material, there we go. Hey, there we go. And we can increase the emission, let's go to like a five, to bring the glow up and make this thing like if it's a hot red metal and the volcano and everything. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the process that we normally do for an asset. Once we have this asset ready inside of our DCC, which is our dedicated like creating app, uh, such as Maya, Blender, 3D Studio Max, or whatever. Once we have this, we can bring it into Unreal. There's a couple of things that we need to do here in Unreal. Uh, we need to create a material for this thing. Let me show you real quick. Here we go. So you can see we have all of the maps right here, our color map, our emissive map, our normal map, our ambient occlusion, roughness, metallic map. And we plug those in into the material here. I know it looks like a mess, but it's way, way simpler than it, uh, than it looks. And once we have this here ready, that's it, like our asset is ready to go. So as you can see right here, the asset is perfectly ready for us and we can start doing all sorts of things. For instance, one thing that I uh, believe might be interesting to, to do would be to add a little bit of particles. Now, I'm not a particle artist, but there are some cool 
things right here on the starter contents. If we go to particles, you're going to see that we have this smoke and this fire. We even have this sparks as well. So I think the fire might be an, an interesting one to have like on top of the of the volcano. So I'm going to go to the third person character here. I'm going to add a particle system. Uh, let's do a, I think it's a cascade particle system. There we go. You can see the fire is there by default. And then I'm going to drag and drop this onto my static mesh. And what I can do is I can scale this particle system. Let's do like 0.1. So that it's really small. There we go. And we can move this particle system, like the origin of the particle system close to the ax. Right now it's not working exactly as I would expect because the, the scale is not right, but it kind of looks like embers are flying from the axe. So I'm just going to position this close to the axe. And not only is this going to give it a very, very nice glow, it's also going to uh, add illumination to the scene, as you can see right there. So if I just compile and we go out and into the game, we can see this going on. And look at that. We got this glowing axe with embers flying from it and the character walking. Of course, the animations of this character are not perfectly like uh, calibrated for this particular weapon. You can see she's kind of like hitting her head right there. But this is the process that we do. And as you can see, this axe is now in game. Look at this. It even like emits light into the scene. So it's working as a light source, which is very, very, very cool. And um, yeah, we we pretty much cover like this is how we we think about creating something from beginning to end and getting it ready for a triple a uh, experience so that's it my friends now as i've been mentioning this is part of our new course like all of this uh, axe creation is part of the new course that we just uh, released and if you want to check it out make sure to check our commercial right here i'll see you back on the next one hey guys do you want to learn how to create amazing 3d weapons well look no further in this course, I will show you everything you need to know to create this amazing result. My name is Abraham Leal. I have over 13 years of experience in the industry and I will be your instructor throughout this course. In this course, we'll cover everything from modeling to rendering a fantasy weapon with the best quality and results. I will be teaching you industry proven techniques and workflows so that you too can create amazing AAA assets. We will be using Blender and Substance Painter to do this, and I will be guiding you through every step of the way. Don't worry if you don't know the basics. We have a chapter zero where we will be covering everything about Blender so that you too can achieve great results. We have a full support network as well in our different socials, so make sure to join and get the most out of this experience. Join me in this exciting journey and become the greatest artist you can be. So that's it, my friends. If you want to join this course and learn more about the whole pipeline, make sure to check the link down here and uh, make sure to join all of our socials, Discord, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, like everywhere you want to follow us, we're going to be right there. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.